So the first question I've got is from, we have one from Musipesitle Matondo, and he, he, I don't know if it's a he or she, but they were just like, Tobile, please explain what is titration. Now remember, when we talk about titration, we talk about acids, we talk about bases. When we talk about titration is when we have a beaker or let's say a test tube with an acid or a base and we are trying to neutralize it, right? So every time you think about the titration, you must think of a beaker. We are putting something in there and then we do not know the concentration of one or the other or we do not know the volume of the one or the other. So when you're talking about titration, there's important things that you need to remember. The first one, you must first identify. You must first identify the acid and the base. Now remember, when we're talking about acids and bases, some of them can be a little tricky, especially when we talk about things like water, which where water can actually be an acid or it can be an, a base, an amphrolite, right? Remember, amphibian lives on earth and water. Amphrolite can either be an acid or a base. So when, you, when you're working with acids and bases, step number one, identify your acids and bases. Now you're gonna ask me, uh, Tops, where do I know or where do I learn this? Taking you back to grade 10. In grade 10, we did the introduction of acids and bases. Now, we also know that some acids actually, you can say um, there's a common trend in some of them, right? Even your bases, some of them will always have an OH, like sodium hydroxide and stuff like that. Then you get things like sulfuric acid and so forth. So you must know how the molecular symbol looks. And then you must also know whether in that equation is it acting as a base or as an acid. How do I know this? Remember, we did the conjugate acid base pairs when we're doing um, acids and bases. So looking at the Freud reaction, we can say whether it's an acid and base in the reverse reaction, is it then the conjugate acid or the conjugate base? We're still working with titration. So once you've identified the acid and the base, another thing that you need to look for is you need to balance the equation. You balance the equation. Remember, the important thing with chemistry when you balance the equation is because we work with ratios. Right? For an example, Mbali decides to be a sweetheart and she decides to bake, everyone had mindset, some cupcakes. So Mbali decides to start baking. For every cup of flour, she's going to use two tablespoons of baking powder. That is required when you're baking cupcakes. You can't have 10 kilograms of flour and then only have one teaspoon of baking powder. It doesn't work like that. It's a ratio of one is to two. So it's the same thing when you're working with acids and bases. After you've identified your acids and bases, you then have to balance your chemical equation because that means you need two of these for every one of this. The same thing when you're looking at your products. It means for every two of these, I was able to form this and this. Taking you back when we did uh, Le Chatelier's principle when we were working with the ratios. Remember, it's very crucial when we start working with ratios. Whether we're doing acids and bases, whether we're working with Le Chatelier, in chemistry, you need to balance the equation. If you do not balance the equation, you are not going to get the correct answer. Another thing that you must remember, um, is you need to solve, <clears throat> you solve the unknown. So most of the time, they're going to give you one or two unknowns, but most of the formulas that we use, we either use C is equal to M over big M and then V. Remember, C is your concentration. This is your concentration. M is your mass in grams. This is your molar mass, right, in grams per mole. Do not confuse this. Most of you guys confuse the capital M with the small M, and then V is your volume in cubic decimeter. That's very, very important. Another one that we always use, we always use the, the moles of the acid over the moles of the base is equal to the concentration of the acid multiplied by the volume of the acid all over the concentration of the base and the volume of the base. This is a very easy one to remember because this step number here you will get after you have balanced once you've balanced your equation, then you can say, oh, it's a ratio of one is to two or however. Balanced equation first. And then the nice thing is, they can either ask you to calculate the concentration of either one or or, they can give you the volume, they can give you the concentration of the base, and you'll have to find your unknown. 
So when we're doing titration reactions, they will tell you, we've got a mole of sulfuric acid and then we have another base. These are the mole ratios. The volume of the sulfuric acid, let's say it's one cubic decimeter and three cubic decimeter for the base. They'll give you the concentration of the acid and then they'll ask you after titration has been reached, what is the concentration of the base now? So it means you'll have one unknown. And then now supersede that the only thing you have to do now is mathematics. Just gonna go straight over to it. Remember, if you're working with this and you have an unknown, my best advice is to cross multiply and then divide to what you're looking for. Another mistake you guys make, you always forget your SI units, my darlings. Remember, if you're just gonna write 15, it could be 15 rand, it could be 15 uh, marshmallows, it could be 15 piglets, you have to say 15 cubic decimeters, 15 grams per mole. So the examiner can see that you are looking for the volume or the concentration, and the SI unit that you found actually resembles what the question is asking. What I always teach my kids, once you've got your answer, go back to the question and see. If they said, calculate the volume, but you have your answer in um, grams per mole, that's not right. Then you go back and you fix and you see what you did wrong, and then you can rectify it. But when we talk about titration, this is the one way that you're going to get it right. Another thing that I can like to add with you guys, guys, in chemistry and in physics, if you don't understand it, draw a picture. Draw a beaker with the sulfuric acid. Draw a little hand that is pouring in the base. Draw a little hand that's putting in the indicator so that in your mind, it's almost like you're doing it. Have you ever heard in physics when they say, in, in, in life when they say, once you've done it, you'll never forget it. So in your mind, it's almost like you're doing it and you can actually see or practically visualize what the examiner wants you to see. But in titration, if you can follow all these steps, I promise you, you can answer any questions. Thank you so much for that question.